the latent capacities for manifesting both ugliness and beauty of life are hidden in the unenlightened. Once one gets enlightened, all the tendencies, latent tendencies or capacities for manifesting ugliness get completely eradicated. After enlightenment, one can manifest only beauty in words, deeds and thoughts. That is not through any particular discipline. They are called non-discipline and the Pali word used for that is called Asaka. The enlightened are called Asaka, they are not disciplined. Because there is no discipline, no control is needed as they have completely eradicated the latent capacities or tendencies for manifesting ugliness in words, uh, deeds and thoughts. The enlightened are therefore intrinsically beautiful in their life. In fact, being enlightened is manifesting the supreme beauty of life. In the ordinary unenlightened beings, they can, they too can manifest beauty in their life, in their words, deeds and thoughts through generosity, through sensitivity and through tranquility. Generosity reduces the self-centered thirst for pleasure called tanna. Desires are gradually diminished by generosity. There can't be generosity in the mind that get, that manifest any form of desire. Even the desire to be generous is harmful to the perfect manifestation of this generosity. Generosity to be perfect should be should should get manifested automatically, spontaneously, intrinsically. So are all virtues. The enlightened are virtues intrinsically, spontaneously, unintentionally. Because the enlightened are devoid of any intention. They are called Chetu Vimukti, that means no motivation, no intention, no desire. Because of that, that is called Tannakkaya, cessation or eradication of desire is called enlightenment. With that, they are get manifested a state of mind, a state of words, a state of deeds that can be called Vita Ragi, Vita Dosi, Vita Mohi. Vita Ragi means free from Raga. Raga is attachment. The enlightened are not attached to anything. Vita Dosi means they resent nothing. 
their mind is free from both attachment and resentment. That is the beauty of their mind. And that is the beauty of the mind that can manifested in their words and deeds. Whatever they speak is beautiful. Whatever they do is beautiful. There is not the beauty to which get attached in our normal life. There is a sublime beauty. That the beauty of wholeness in their life. To be whole in life, one must intrinsically become virtuous in all their thoughts, words and deeds. In the Bhikkhu Agga of the Dhammapada, with the mentions the qualities of a intrinsically disciplined enlightened one. They to, to be holy, one must be holy in Chakuna Sangaro Sadhu. You must be well disciplined in your eye, in seeing. Here Sangvara is translated as discipline, but that is not a perfectly a good translation because discipline means controlling your eye. Here there is no control because in the enlightened the eye cannot get manifested in a wrong way. We have to control if something goes wrong. But here intrinsically it takes the correct path, the correct manner, the correct technique. Chakuna Sangoro Sadhu. Vara means noble, sublime. Sang means the nature. Therefore, by nature, their eyes are well controlled. That means, by sight, they do not create any bad karma, any evil karma. That means, their eyes are not attached to anything, no resentful to anything, no illusion by anything. Eyes become Vita Ragi, Vita Dosi, Vita Mohi. That is the summary, the sublime nature of eye that does not get attached to anything, that does not resent anything, and that does not get illusion by anything. Because the enlightened can take things as they are. They see things as they are. That is mentioned as yata, bhuta, jnana, datsana. Seeing things as they are, therefore they are not illusion. Seeing things as they are means they see the reality of everything. That everything is an illusion. That appearance is deceptive. They are, they are not illusion by any sight. Because everything is born to decay and die. Even the beauty is ephemeral, is transient, is temporary, it is always changing. No beauty can last forever or for long. They appear and disappear. Even ugliness. is temporary, ephemeral, impermanent. Therefore, the eyes of the enlightened does not dislike what is ugly and does not like what is beautiful. That is the beauty of their sight. That is the beauty of their seeing. And that beauty is sublime, that is why it is named as Sangvaro Sadhu, holy and 
ब्यूटीफुल साधु सॉन्ग सोते न सॉन्ग वालों दिस हाउ इट इज डिस्क्राइब बाय द बुद्ध इन द बिकू आगे ऑफ द डैम फादर सोते न सिमिलरली यू कैन बी होली एंड ब्यूटीफुल इन योर इयर्स यू कैन हियर एनीथिंग without getting illusion without presenting and without being attached to anything that means taking things as they are gaane in samvaro sadhu your nose can be so discipline automatically not discipline not controlling but intrinsically control sadhu juhaya samvaro Your tongue can be so disciplined intrinsically. Kaya na sangguru sadhu. Your body can be disciplined. That means intrinsically disciplined, not to be attached to anything, not to resent anything, not to be illusioned by anything. That is state of an enlightened mind, which is free from raga, dosa, moha. Raga is attachment, dosa is resentment. मोह इल्यूशन और इग्नोरेंस साधु वाचाय संगरो इट इज वर्ड्स मस्ट बी वेल डिसिप्लिन दे स्पीक ओनली ब्यूटिफुल वर्ड्स मनसा संगरो साधु इट इज होली एंड सब ब्लाइन टू बी डिसिप्लिन इन माइंड सबत संगरो साधु डिसिप्लिन इन ऑल Discipline in all aspect. Discipline in words, deeds, and thoughts. Sabat sam baro bhikkhu sab dukkha pamujjati. They overcome all suffering. Beauty is in the life that has overcome suffering. A life that does not suffer. All our sufferings are mind-made because feelings are mind-made. It is the feeling that makes us suffer. Feelings make us to get attached to. Feeling is called vedana. and in the unenlightened we get attached to the feeling that are present resent the feeling that are unpleasant and get illusion by neutral feelings because we can't understand that feel that neutral feeling is no feeling but just awareness we can see anything as i mentioned earlier hear anything smell anything taste anything touch anything without the feeling of attachment and resentment that awareness is a neutral awareness that is the awareness of an enlightened mind beautiful mind that awareness is called sanya vedaita they become aware of the signal uh, even in the enlightened even in the buddha when there is a pain in his back he knows it he becomes aware of it because the buddha had a back ache that crops up often he had a head, not only a back ache but also a headache that uh, get cropped up often in his life but he had no resentment resentment the feeling of resentment with regard to those aches they are aware there is a ache but they don't identify themselves the enlightened one with their pains with their thoughts with their feelings good they are detached from their feelings they are detached from their body rupa 
they are detached from their Vedana, the feeling. They are detached from their thought formation, sanya. They are detached from sankara, thinking. They are detached from even their own consciousness. But detached from positive and negative consciousness. But they have neutral consciousness, free from Raga, Dosa, Moha. That is why in describing Nirvana, Buddha referred to Nirvana as Vijnanam Anidasanam. There is consciousness, there is pure consciousness, but it cannot be shown by any example because we can be aware of only defiled con consciousness as unenlightened ones. We never become conscious of something, we either like or dislike it, or ignore it, that is moha, because we are controlled by attachment, resentment and illusion called raga, dosa, moha. Beautiful life is the beauty of life free from raga, dosa, Moha. That can be manifested even before enlightenment. Enlightened life is perfectly blissful and beautiful without any break, without any up, down, up and downs. It can be of the same level throughout the beauty of their thoughts, words and deeds. But with regard to enlightenment, we get moments when we are free from attachment, when we are free from resentment, when we are free from ignorance. And that is when we practice the Buddhist meditation called Vipassana. Very often it is preceded by the, not the Vipassana, the inside meditation, but normally it is preceded by the tranquility meditation called Samatha Bhavana. That Bhavana makes the mind tranquil by suppressing the feeling of attachment, resentment and ignorance. Then the conscious mind is tranquil, but the latent tendencies to like, dislike, and to volition are there in the subconscious mind. Enlightenment means complete eradication of attachment, resentment, and illusion in the subconscious mind. Subconscious mind contains the memories of all our experiences throughout of all the lives in the past. A series of lives, innumerable lives. Even a Buddha cannot tell the beginning of our existence in this existence, life in this existence. That is why he said a number of times, Anamataggo Bhikkhu Sansaro Pubba Koti Nupanyayati. Anamataggo Bhikkhu Sansaro. I can't see the beginning of the existence. That means existence is getting manifested in time, but it is timeless manifestation without, without a beginning although there is an ending. There is an ending of the physical birth at the enlightenment. Enlightened are not reborn in a physical birth, in a physical world. But we cannot say 
the enlightened are not existing after they are passing away. Enlightening is also manifestation of the original energy in us. Even the enlightened live by the energy. But this energy is pure energy without giving any burning sensation. That is called, they are called Nibbana, Yatayam Padipo as a blowing off of a lamp, all burning. Because in our sensation, our eyes get burned by light waves, ears get burned by sound waves, nose by smell, tongue by taste, skin by touch. Pasapachya Vedana, contact leads to the sensation called Vedana getting heated. Perfect tranquility is there in the Nirvana and even while living their mind is in perfect tranquility. Therefore all their words, deeds and thoughts are beautiful. That means enlightenment means manifesting the original instinct beauty of our life, beauty of our existence. Because at the base of our life lies the Nirvana, the supreme bliss. It is the supreme bliss that gets manifested as beautiful forms in the thoughts, words, and deeds of the enlightened. And in us at times when we are free from, when our mind is free from attachment, resentment and illusion. That means when we face things as they are without any attachment or resentment, we are beautiful. People may blame, we are not getting angry. People may praise, but we don't get extraordinarily delighted. We can take things as they are. That is what Buddha said in the Sutta, after his enlightenment, people used to praise him, that, but he doesn't get over delighted. He can accept it as it is. People blame him, but he does not get depressed by that. No conflict with that. Patigo Nahoti. No conflict, no resentment. Anandu Nahoti, with regard to praise, that means no delight. Because the supreme delight, the bliss in their mind can never be decreased nor increased. And that is the beauty of an enlightened life. 